Hello and welcome to the news to present. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo. Top stories. Finance Minister Felix Mtapi has unveiled the 2018 national budget proposing to spend 71.6 billion kwacha. President Edgar Lungu has defended his foreign trips saying they are used to explore new avenues for trade. And National Skip Talker Team coach Wetson Yurenda has named his final squad for the 2018 World Cup qualifier game against Nigeria. The news in detail. Finance Minister Felix Mutati has unveiled the 2018 national budget proposing to spend 71.6 billion kwacha or 25.9% of GDP. In his budget speech to parliament, Mr. Mutati said on this amount of this amount 49 billion kwacha or 68.5% of the total budget will be financed by domestic revenues and 2.4 billion kwacha or 3.4% by grants from various cooperating partners. He says the balance of 20.1 billion or 28.1% of the budget will be financed through domestic and external borrowing. Mr. Mtapi says in line with the 7th National Development Plan, the allocations in the budget are targeted at addressing the five strategic areas of economic diversification and job creation, poverty and vulnerability reduction, reducing developmental inequalities, enhancing human development and creating a conducive governance environment for a diversified and inclusive economy. He has proposed to spend 25.9 billion kwacha on general public services with 7.3 billion kwacha and 7 billion kwacha going towards external and domestic debt payments respectively. Mr. Mtabi says in the same vein, he has allocated the, to the Constituency Development Fund a total of 218.4 million kwacha to support projects at the community level. He has also allocated 2.1 billion kwacha towards the maintenance of public order and safety. He says key interventions will include the recruitment of security personnel, continued rehabilitation and construction of infrastructure, and the modernization of operations of law enforcement agencies. And Mr. Mutati has proposed to spend one to spend 11.6 billion kwacha on education and skills development. He says this will facilitate spending on, among others, infrastructure development, student loans, teacher recruitment, and procurement of school requisites. Mr. Mutati has also proposed to spend 6.8 billion kwacha on health, of which 1.2 billion kwacha is for procurement of essential drugs and medical supplies representing a 56% increase over the 2017 allocation. He says the balance will be used to finance the health infrastructure, medical equipment and staff costs, including the recruitment of medical personnel. The minister has also proposed to discontinue the five-year income tax holiday that is facilitated through the Zambia Development Agency, ZDA. He says in place of the tax holiday, he proposes to grant accelerated depreciation for capital expenditures by qualifying investments in priority sectors. He has also proposed to introduce an excise duty of two kwacha per 50 kilogram bag of cement. Mr. Mtati has further proposed to increase TV levy to five kwacha from the current three kwacha. He has also proposed to introduce a landing rights charge at the rate of 3,150 kwacha per television channel, which has less than 35% local content except for educational and scientific channels. Mr. Mtati has also proposed to introduce property transfer tax at 5% on the transfer of intellectual property. President Edgar Lungu has defended his international trips, saying they are used to explore new avenues for trade between countries. President Lungu says people who are attacking him over his trips don't know what it takes to be president. Speaking to journalists before departure for Botswana at the Kenneth Kaunda International Airport, President Lungu says there is nothing wrong with him celebrating with neighboring countries their independences. The head of state says this is important because both countries have a lot to learn from each other. He has since disclosed that the South African president Jacob Zuma, Botswanan president Tseretse Kama Ian Kama, and the new Angolan president are expected in the country to commemorate Zambia's independence. President Lungu says this is important that neighboring countries support each other. President Lungu has since challenged his critics to meet him in 2021 and see how they will be defeated. And President Lungu has affirmed the government's commitment to complete the construction of the Kazungula Bridge linking Zambia and Botswana. He says the bridge will bring economic benefits to the country. That's why we want that road to be done, that bridge to be done. You know, sometimes people do things quietly. But 
think it's a little prison there and this one has been required, yes. But that bridge in the building, which one has done very well. And I think yeah, that's an activity which people have not noticed. But when we're done, we'll see how much we benefit from that at the end. So most of the things should be done. And done quietly, I think. Because if you talk too much like other people, you lose energy. I'm trying to be biased. <laughs> but because they have achieved something. And they invite you to come uh, to, and you say, no, what kind of will it buy you? Yeah, uh, I can tell you that President Tuma is coming uh, in October. And I can tell you that uh, President Kama is coming in October for the independence. I can also tell you that President Joao is coming in November. He wanted to come this month. Why? Police in Lusaka have picked up a number of people who defied the directive not to go ahead with a protest at Parliament against government's procurement of 42 fire tenders at a total cost of 42 million US dollars. Those arrested include Patriots for Economic Progress leader Sean Tembo, Alliance for Community Action Executive Director Laura Mitty, and the Zambia Council for Social Development Executive Director Louis Mwape. As he was being picked up, Mr. Mwape said he was delighted at his arrest because it signifies his fight for the rights of Zambians. He says he didn't see any reason why police stopped the protest from being staged when they had applied for a permit. And PEP leader Sean Tembo says he is disappointed with the unfair application of the Public Order Act by the police. He says he does not understand why patriotic front cadres are allowed to move freely while people fighting for the good of the people are arrested. Ron Member of Parliament Chishimba Kambwili says the 2018 national budget is not pro-poor. Mr. Kambwili points out that taxes have been increased including TV levy, questioning the logic behind the increase when the nation is going digital. He says the ruling PF is slowly diverting from late President Michael Sutter's legacy and vision. Mr. Kamwili says what he is seeing in the Patriotic Front is the Rupiah Banda legacy. He says the 2018 budget presented to Parliament by Finance Minister Felix Mutati speaks volumes that, that it is not a proper budget. PF was created on lower taxes, more jobs and more money in people's pockets. The Minister of Finance comes, he increases the taxes, he increases the tax on a stove, he increases the tax on a geezer, he increases the tax on cement for the poor people that are building. So, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? It is no longer PF, I've told you. This is MMD, reloaded, more taxes to the people. So I'm, I'm, I'm extremely disappointed that we have moved away from, you know, what we stood for as PF and just going the Lupia way. I feel sorry for my grandmother in Mpolokoso. While they are saying we are taking electricity to Mpolokoso, they are increasing the cost of that electricity, they are increasing the cost of the stove, they are increasing the cost of the geyser. They are telling my grandmother, you can't bath hot water. 
you can't cook on a stove. You have to continue cooking on Imbaula. That's an insult to the people of Zambia. But anyway, when you have a president who is corrupt, these are results. Information and Broadcasting Services Minister Kampamba Mulenga has justified the increase in TV levy in the 2018 national budget from the current three quarter to five quarter per month. Ms. Mulenga has explained that the maintenance for ZNBC comes from the TV levy, therefore it is necessary to hide the levy to promote quality broadcasting by ZNBC. She is hopeful that there will be drastic improvement in terms of broadcasting following the measure taken by the Minister to, of Finance to increase TV levy. Ms. Mulenga explains that following the partnership between ZNBC and Topstar, the two companies have pumped in a lot of resources in rolling out the digital migration program, making it necessary to increase the levy. Like I said, I'll just run you through back. The TV levy has been a three-quarter, mm -hmm. and the three-quarter is what has been actually the maintenance cost for ZNBC. And you know that the, the top star is a JV between uh, uh, Star Times and uh, ZNBC. And government has actually spent colossal sums of money to bring in digital equipment, to build state-of-the-art equipment. And obviously this equipment does not come in cheap. There must be a maintenance cost. We don't want to go digital for just one month. Obviously, if you pay, it will show. And obviously, to everything, there's a cost attached. And obviously, we are moving from analog to digital. So obviously, you know the kind of infrastructure that comes with the digital. So obviously, the price has to go up. Yes. Meanwhile, Home Affairs Minister Stephen Campiongo says the 2018 national budget brings a lot of hope for enhanced human capital in his ministry. Mr. Campiongo says his ministry has, in the recent past, lagged behind in terms of human resource. He says the budgetary allocation to his ministry will enhance security in the country. Mr. Campiongo has described the budget as inclusive as it has responded to the anxieties of a lot of people. Uh, so that um, this budget has brought a lot of hope. And I think it's one budget that we have all had an input as, uh, as cabinet, uh, you know, starting from His Excellency the President. And so it's one budget that we all collectively own. And uh, I think it has answered a lot of, uh, you know, people's anxieties. Now, speaking for my ministry, I must say that uh, I've always been chatting with you, colleagues from the media, that um, our ministry is constrained in terms of manpower across all the law enforcement agencies. And so what you have been given, um, you know, as it is said, there's no money which is ever enough. So we are quite, uh, um, you know, comfortable and we are grateful that uh, this time around that we are going to be able to beef up the numbers. I must state that uh, all the parameters of all the pillars of development can never come to fruition in the absence of peace. Peace has been thrown away, where law and order, where law and order has uh, broken down, you can never talk of any development that is meaningful. You have seen countries that uh, are, you know, um, are, are you know, experiencing um, disturbances, how they are struggling. So we are very happy that we are going to be part and parcel of the development of this country by ensuring that the, we preserve the peace that we have enjoyed from the time we attained independence. And so, for me, like I've said, we have been collaborating with the Minister of Finance, and uh, I think it's time for us to get down to work and ensure that uh, we save the nation um, as we are supposed to do. Uh, the MMD Felix Mutati led faction says Finance Minister Felix Mutati means well for the nation. MMD National Secretary Rafael Nakachinda says the 2018 budget presented to Parliament has will, has will drive and will drive the nation's economic agenda forward. Mr. Nakachinda tells Q News that this is not time to practice petty politics, but time to analyze the budget objectively for the good of the nation. He says it does not matter where Mr. Mutati is politically inclined, stating that emphasis should be on the development of the economy. I think uh, we cannot crowd uh, such an important uh, presentation with, uh, you know, politics. Uh, I think it's important that all of us focus on interrogating and examining what has been presented because that is really what is going to guarantee bread and butter issues that affect us on a daily basis. For us as MMD, we are focused on making sure that our contribution through the Minister of Finance remain effective and um, uh, without any form of destruction 
uh, and to that effect will not be drawn into petty politics at all. Think. Uh, Vice President Inonge Wina has urged common market for Eastern and Southern Africa Comesa member states to accommodate the growth of infant industries as intra-Comesa trade increases. Ms. Wina says this can be done if member countries have a strong legal framework on competition and non-tolerance of unjust practices. Speaking when she officiated at the opening of the 20th meeting of Comesa Minister, Ministers of Justice and Attorney Generals in Lusaka, Ms. Wina says in order to effectively create the decent jobs and wealth, especially for the youth, there is urgent need for industrialization and value addition for all commodities in all member countries. She has also urged member countries to ensure that investments in, is environmentally friendly and provides sustainable growth. Meanwhile, the vice president is delighted with the establishment of the Comesa Infrastructure Fund. She says the fund will assist member countries, including Zambia, mobilize resources effectively and reduce the burden on infrastructure development which member states have faced in the recent past. To ensure that we promote fair trade, as member states, we must commit our trade regime to fairness and justice in tandem with the decisions of the board of the Comesa Competition Commission. However, we cannot promote intra-regional trade without attracting investment. We need investment in order to promote industrialization and value addition of our commodities. This is the only way to ensure that we effectively create the decent jobs and the wealth, especially for our youth. And as we call for investment, this investment must be environmental friendly and that which ensures sustainable growth so that we do not destroy the source of our commodities. I am delighted to mention that this gathering will also consider a revised draft on Comesa Common Investment Agreement, CCIA in short, aimed at addressing emerging issues. The Comesa Council of Ministers thought it wise to endorse the decision of Comesa Ministers responsible for investment to review that agreement which is yet to enter into force. Speaking earlier, Comesa Secretary General Cindy Songwenya said member states still have challenges when it comes to implementing past regional instruments of law. Mr. Nguenya says there is very slow implementation which invariably retards the process of integrating the Comesa region. Uh, the chairperson of the committee, Honorable Kevin Lubinda, has indicated what the issues are and also the successes. But notwithstanding that, I just want to mention two things. One, that um, when the summit last year considered and council and summit, the status of the domestication of Comesa decisions uh, pursuant to Article 10, 11 and 12 of the treaty, of the regulations, of the directives, uh, it found that uh, the member states have not done very well. And perhaps because this is a meeting of uh, ministers of justice and generals, you may wish, honorable ministers, to address uh, yourselves to this, as to why is it that decisions are made, regulations are made, amendment to the treaty and rules that uh, honorable chairperson has indicated are made, but then when it comes now to... Health Minister Dr. Shitalu Chilofia has directed the General Nursing Council of Zambia to close down any nursing or midwifery college or university that is failing to abide by the set regulations and standards of operation. 
This directive comes in the wake of revelations by the GNC that it has closed down three universities and one college of nursing and midwifery in the past six months. Dr. Tilufia urged the council to track down all schools that are not providing quality education and complying with the set standards and have them closed down. He says government will support all actions by the council aimed at ensuring that the country has qualified and the best health personnel. Meanwhile, the health minister says his ministry is seeking treasury authority to recruit more health workers in the last quarter of this year and early next year. Dr. Tulufia states that it is government's desire to increase health personnel in the country as a way of improving the health sector. Speaking yeah. during the third... You are actually improving service delivery. I also want to urge the private institutions to adhere to the minimum standards that are required for training. Closure of four institutions of training in the last six months by the GNC makes sad hearing, but also declares, also states our intention to ensure that we train high quality staff. I want to urge the General Nursing Council to step up their inspections and ensure that any facilities that do not meet the minimum standards are shut down. <laughs> the Health Professionals Council of Zambia must also do the same to ensure that the quality of nurses and doctors and health workers, health workers and their producers meet international standards. This is good for the public. While we don't want to hear of students being thrown back onto the street, we want to aid strict adherence to minimum standards. I also want to assure the public. In a speech read on his behalf by Zuno President Tom Yungana, General Nursing Council Registrar Aaron Banda says the closed institutions were operating and training nurses without authorization from the council. Mr. Banda has warned that the council would not hesitate to pronounce on to pounce on any institution operating illegally or outside the law. Allow me to report that as by yesterday, we have on our register 23 government training institutions for nurses and midwives, 10 based training institutions for nurses and midwives, and 32 private owned training institutions of nurses and midwives bringing the total to 65. However, we had experiences where we have seen some training institutions which includes both universities and colleges operating and training nurses without approval by the council. In the past six months, I'm happy to report that we have discontinued three nursing training programs offered by three different universities and one nursing program offered illegally for that matter by a, a, uh, a college. And we want to emphasize using this platform that the council won't hesitate to pounce on any nursing institution that does not follow the law as provided with regard to opening and operating nursing program. Ministry of Water Development, Sanitation and Environmental Protection Permanent Secretary Bishop Dr. Edi Chomba says government remains committed to ensuring water security in Zambia is not under threat. Dr. Chomba says it is for this reason that this week he launched the Chambishi Water Security Initiative, which is a multi-sectoral partnership aimed at protecting the Chambishi catchment. He says failure to manage the water sector is failing to protect the people from sanitation challenges. Dr. Chomba says it is for this important reason that the government under President Edgar Lungu has placed emphasis on the need to ensure water security in the country is not in any way under threat. Um, our interviews today and our tour of duty finds us in Kasama of Northern Province, where we have come and we have already launched the Chambeshi Water Security uh, Initiative. And um, no matter the stories we're going to talk about water, regardless, if we do not talk about water security, 
where we are able to balance the waters in the areas where they are, we will fail in our doing. But then uh, this initiative of today's launch also uh, is a good one because the government is no longer working alone. We are bringing in the private sector uh, as partners into the water security. Now, if we are talking about producing more fruit and more vegetable and more legumes and more corn, we are simply saying we have got to have water first. Um, Government says it has prioritized the skills development for the country to attain the desired human capital development. Ministry of Youth, Sport and Child Development Director of Youth, Colin Zumulonda, says this is so because for any country to have meaningful development, there should be qualified and skilled human resource. Mr. Mulonda says skills development coupled with experience is therefore key to empowering citizens and affording them the opportunity to participate meaningfully in economic activities. Speaking when he officiated at the fifth graduation ceremony for the internship program in Lusaka, Mr. Mulonda says government will continue investing in skills development so that more youths can be trained and empowered with the necessary skills needed on the labor market. The three months exposure to the five-star hotel have provided them with the necessary experience which meets international standards. Ladies and gentlemen, government will continue investing in skill development so that more youth can be trained and empowered with necessary skills needed on the level market. However, due to high demand for resources from the Treasury, from different sectors of the economy, government needs support from stakeholders such as Pamoti Hotel to complement its efforts in enhancing skill development. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge the young people who have benefited from the internship training to exercise discipline and work hard. You should focus on what you have learned and experienced during periods of learning and internship. They have now become ambassadors of government and promoting hotel in promoting economic diversification and job creation through the tourism sector. The rich world culture and values of acquired give you an opportunity to work anywhere in the world besides creating your own. Speaking earlier, Provincial Youth Development Coordinator Wana Kanikinzi says over 10,000 youths have benefited from the Youth Resource Center since its inception. I am pleased to note that the Saka Youth Resource Center, with support from the Ministry and our cooperating partners, has, has recorded success in empowering over 10,000 youths since, it, since its inception. I'd like to urge the management of the center to continue working hard so that this cooperation is continued for the benefit of the youth in Lusaka province. I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the management and staff at Taj Pamodi Hotel for supporting the youth training program through internship of our students in food production and general hospitality. In sports news, Chipolo Polo coach Wetson Nyerenda has named his final 23-man squad to face Nigeria in a crucial 2018 Russia World Cup qualifier. Nyerenda has maintained most of the team that beat Algeria over two legs, with the only inclusion to the team being Sweden-based under-20 midfielder Edward Chilofia. Fashion Sakala, who was red-carded in the first leg of the Algeria encounter, returns to the team after serving his suspension. The Chipolo Polo leave for Ghana on Sunday where they are expected to set up camp before heading to the battleground in Uyo for the 7th October crucial encounter. Zambia are second in the group with seven points, while Nigeria are topping the group with 10 points. To end the news, the headlines once again. Finance Minister Felix Mutati has unveiled the 2018 national budget, proposing to spend 71.6 billion kwacha. President Edgar Lungu has defended his foreign trips, saying they are used to explore new avenues for trade. That's all we have in our news, but for more news, you can go to our website, qfmzambia.com. My name is Jeffrey Ziambo. Bye-bye.